Hello guys, I'm your host Tommy the Hammer hanging out with Olivia, BC, and Johnny Rocket. Tonight is a double feature night. We're going to be starting things off with my pick. You know that Tommy the Hammer can't pick something that's normal and <laughs> the theme for tonight was horror so when I told BC this I'm sure he's been stirring the pot on his own pick. For me, you guys know that I like Italian Jalio movies, oh especially BC, he knows I like them a lot. but. I don't just like the Italian ones. I always try to find Jalio from like different countries, and that's tonight's pick. We're gonna be checking out this movie called Corpse Mania. It is a <laughs> Chinese Jalio movie. Wow, yeah. I have never seen this movie before in my life. What a great time. Early 1980s, and it's produced by the Shaw Brothers. So oh, the Shaw Brothers are awesome. DC knows the Shaw Brothers. They've done a lot of things from martial arts exploitation to pink violence films. So this movie should be interesting no matter what. You guys get to check out the trailer to Corpse Mania, peep that shit, and we get back. You know our opinion on the movie, and then we're going to be going right into BC's pick. See you on the other side, motherfuckers. Okay guys, we just got done watching the movie Corpse Mania and you know during the movie I actually had to be reminded by Johnny Rocket to kind of watch this film based on its own merits because I have a tendency to compare movies to other movies that I've seen and I can't help it, it's something that I do. So uh, watching the film I had to reconfigure how I was viewing it and I was able to kind of appreciate the movie for what it was but at the same time. I've seen a lot of Jalio movies, I've seen a lot of Asian horror movies, and uh, this one didn't necessarily deliver what I personally wanted out of a Asian themed you know, slasher, but at the same time, the very end of this movie full sent everything that I had expected within the capacity of five fucking minutes. <laughs> um, the cinematography is great, the actors, you know, are serviceable, and uh, the music itself is very haunting, and if you like that whole Italian, um, kind of gothic horror that was prevalent in like the 60s, 70s, and to a lesser extent, the early 1980s, then you might want to check this movie out because it's interesting. This is the Chinese take on that whole Jalio subgenre. So I thought it was interesting, if anything. What about you, BC? Um. I'm, I'm right there with you. I, I feel like this is one of those movies that has a few like really good scenes, but everything in between for me felt like it was kind of just plodding along and not like, I don't know if I found the central mystery interesting enough to like make up for that plotting type of feel. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but the, there are some great death scenes and, and the ending is for sure memorable so i'm kind of right there with you like there's enough meat here to be happy that you watched it but it's not like you know i, I don't know if it's quite top tier or anything like that either no. so it, it's fun um but don't go in with too high of expectations which i did olivia when Rocket read the synopsis before watching this. I kind of got this idea in my head, like, oh, this is probably how it's gonna go. And I feel like I do that with a lot of movies. But then, as you watch it, it's like, oh, it's going in this direction, or this is happening. So then it kind of, you know, doesn't follow along with what I usually think is gonna happen. So that's kind of a good thing. But I was like, oh, okay, this this is interesting. <laughs> so it didn't go how I expected, but not in a bad way. It was like, it was interesting. And especially like the last 10 minutes, it was like one thing after another. And you're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I mean, yeah. What's what's happening? I have no idea what's like, what could happen next. So yeah. I thought it was really interesting. And I like the cinematography and I 
everything about it. It was really good. Amen. Rock it. Yeah, I definitely had, I mean, my own expectations from reading this was like, oh, we're going to get a slasher, man. We're going to see, you know, bodies and bodies and knives slashing and blood everywhere. We did, did get that a little bit, but certainly not to the extent I thought we were going to get. It was very much more like mystery and who done it, you know, and trying to solve the crime, you know, and just had a, you know, a very, you know, horrific pretense, you know, some weirdo, you know, likes to rape dead corpses, <laughs> you know, and you're like, oh, that's weird. And you get a little taste that at the beginning, you're like, oh, okay, this is weird. But then it's like, yeah, it's kind of, I don't know, the, the plot thickens. And, like, you're like, wait a minute. And you're like, okay, like, if this is obviously supposed to be some kind of, like, full she thing, like, we're going to have some kind of twist, right? And you're like, I don't know, they, 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 they do a good job of kind of hiding it, though. Not really, yeah. like, divulging anything. And you really think, okay, it's just going to go this way. But then, yeah, that last five, ten minutes, it's <laughs> like, oh, my God. Like, it just goes... Apes of crap in, man. Like, you know, you, you're getting all kinds of just great action and bodies flying. So, I mean, I can't help but compare it to other Jalio movies because that at its core is what it's going for. Argento, this ain't. Mario Bava, this ain't. Lucio Fulci, this ain't. But in terms of Asian Jalio, I haven't seen many. So, right now, this is pretty damn good in those regards, in terms of an Asian Jalio film. I'm going to go ahead and give the movie Corpse Mania a solid 6.5 out of 10, BC. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I, the ending is really good. I yes. mean, the ending definitely makes up for any of the, the wheels that have been spun and whatnot. And, and like I said, there's like flashes of brilliance here. I just feel like we needed like... I don't know, maybe a couple more flashes. So, you know what I mean? Like, because yes. it, it really does. That's like, there fair. were a couple parts That's where fair. I was like, this is taking longer to get to where it needs You know what I mean? It was just taking too long to get to where it needed to go. Agreed. Um, so, I'm actually right there with you, though. I do think it's like fun and it, it, it is a good uh, watch party type thing. Yeah, we had a good time. So, I'm, I'm yeah. landing right on the same exact rating. I'm going six and a half. Oh, damn. Olivia? This is my first Chinese film. I feel like it was a good one to start off, and I might be the highest on the star count, but I would give this an 8. Oh! I wouldn't have anything really negative to say about it. Like, I think it's good for what it was, and I enjoyed the plot. Yeah, so cool. an 8 out of 10. Winner for you, Johnny Dewar. Oh. <laughs> uh, I was also very entertained with this. I mean, I've seen a few, you know, Chinese-made films before, uh, but I've not seen anything, like, you know, horror mystery, you know, yeah. so that this is the first in that category anyway. But uh, I was very entertained by it. Like, I, I'm not as familiar, you know, with Fulci and, you know, Dario Argento. I mean, a little, little bit here and there, not nearly as much as you guys, you know, so I at least, you know, know what you're talking about when you say that. Yeah. You know, so for me, I, I think I was able to more enjoy this for what it was. And I thought it was pretty good too. I'm also going to give it an eight. Oh, wow. 6688. Six, eight moving on to BC's pick for this double feature. BC, what you got, man? Up your sleeve. So I have a 1968 Japanese movie called Kiraneko, which translates to Black Cat. Ooh. Um, I figured, I, I knew I was second in the running for the, for the, um, the double feature. And I was like, okay, late night, I feel like a black and white ghostly type of movie seemed like a good vibe to mm -hmm, me. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I'll give the quick little rundown from Criterion because just a couple sentences. Uh, in this poetic and atmospheric horror fable set in a village in war-torn feudal Japan, malevolent spirits are ripping out the throats of itinerant samurai. When a military hero is dispatched to confront the unseen force, he finds that he must struggle with personal demons as well. Um, and it says it's a spectacularly eerie twilight tale with a surprising feminist angle evoked Ooh. through ghostly special effects and exquisite cinematography. So I'm excited to see the ghostly special effects for 1968. Yeah, right? Um, I've watched another movie from the director, Kaneda Shindo, before, and I thought it was really, really good. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm really excited to watch this with everyone. Me too. Sounds great. I mean, we're flying blind into both of these motherfucking movies. You know this part, guys. Round two. Check out the trailer. Peep that shit. We'll be right back, guys. <laughs> Samurai
その行き地をすることが私たちの悲願ですそのために天地の魔人に願をかけたのですあれが侍でなかったらの。お待たせしようかい。我が我が夢に姿を変えとは何者の島だ。お前の胸も足もみんな茂と同じだ。お前は茂だ。俺の嫁の茂だ。Got done watching Kaneko Shindo's Kuroneko. Black Cat. Yeah. And、uh, there was a black cat in this movie. It was pretty cool. I like the cat. <laughs> Cats yeah, rule! This, this,、uh, this, was, this is a wild story. Like, I mean, we've got, you know, a, a vengeful ghost tale here、uh, with, you know,、uh, there were some kind of mysterious elements to it because you didn't. Quite know which way it was gonna go, you know, and it felt it felt very surreal. There was a lot of crazy camera work going on here, like for you know 1968 in black and white, you know, what kind of rotoscoping or what was going on in some scenes. Like, you like suddenly you realized it was like being transitioned, and you're like, oh man, it was it was it was messed with your head, man. <laughs> But it, it was, it was, I don't know, it was really neat. You know, it, it's really neat to, to watch an old film like this and see what they had to work with and see how they made it work, you know. And, you know, it just it proves you don't need CGI and all kinds of special effects and prosthetics and whatnot to make anything creepy or gory or weird or scary. Like, you know, it's all about how you set the mood, you know. And, and there was, I mean, this movie was all mood, you know, and it was. I don't know. I think it definitely fits the theme of horror for the devil feature for tonight. You know, I pulled a lot from this movie.、Uh, right off the rip, I was reminded of、uh, George,、uh, George Romero's work. I was also reminded of the movie Carnival of Souls, you know, and there was like this whole thing in like the 60s and 70s where、uh, a lot of experimental directors and artists were kind of coming forward with these like. Stories that told things in a very abstract way, and I feel like that's what this movie does. It tries to tell things in an abstract way,、um, but like another movie that I'm a huge fan of, Insidious, at some point the director has to start serving up answers because you've got these characters, you've got this story, and the initial setup to this movie I thought was creeptastic. The first 20 minutes. Scary, outright scary, and then we have to have the story. And that's not to say that the story itself wasn't very good,、um, it's just that it intrudes, in my opinion, in terms of the mood. But there's a lot going on here. You've got a revenge tale, you've got a ghost story, you've got a love story. It felt very high tech for its time. Because of the cinematography, but at the same time, it also felt very of its time at the same time. But I, pretty, I really enjoyed this movie. The mystery aspect of it, just like, I don't know what's happening, what could happen next, kind of thing, was very interesting.、Um, and it kind of left you wanting more, but I thought it was pretty interesting and I enjoyed it. Uh, so, this is the second movie I've seen from this director,、um, and I like this movie more, and I really like the other one. So, that's a, that's a compliment.、Yeah. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, I think that most of the best horror movies are the ones that are trying to shed some light on humanity or life as we live it. This very much portrays、uh, the samurai in, I guess, the. You know, the people at the high end of the hierarchy as not good people. I, I know that、uh, before we got into this, it was talked about like how we there, we wish there was more elaboration on like how they became ghosts, but I think that that's not the point. I mean, the point was that they were wronged, and no matter what went into how they made the decision, they made the decision that this is what they wanted to do after being wronged, which was to get revenge for what had happened to them. Um, and so, I, I, I don't think that, like, 
you should go too into the nitty gritty with everything in this. I think like at the end of the day, yes, these people present themselves as specters, as ghosts, but this is a human tale and these are people that were wronged and they're trying to, you know, uh, I guess make up for what had happened and get revenge for what happened. So I, I very much dug it um, and I feel like 1960s Japan you have the directors that were very enamored with the samurai and these there's directors like this guy Shindo who uh, had other things to say about the samurai and uh, as someone that is very interested in politics I like that I feel like I don't know I feel like it's a ballsy thing to do as a director to challenge the system yeah, I very much enjoyed this movie well, I'm gonna give this an eight and a half I think oh. it's pretty darn good all right so Back to me, because that's where it was. Um, you know, I liked it a lot too. Um, maybe not as much as some of the other people here, but I gotta say that initially, I was gonna give this a 10 star rating. But it went into directions that I wasn't wild about, and that's just me. So I'm going for a strong eight and a half, almost nine out of 10. Olivia? This actually wasn't one of my favorites, but I still really enjoyed it and I liked it. I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. Ooh, PC. All right, for me, um, I am gonna say I'm usually not really into ghost movies. They usually don't have too much of an impact on me, but I was moved by this one a lot. I mean, like I said, I was almost moved to tears in a couple parts. Um, <laughs> and and I, I think the biggest takeaway from this and why it's so sad is that no one in this movie has any way of winning. Like, everyone in this movie, ghosts, humans alike, other than actually the corrupt politicians, are at kind of in a lose-lose. And I think that that's really sad, but I think that that's quite often how life goes. So, I liked this a lot, and I'm going to go big with what Tom almost was thinking of giving. I think I'm going to go 10 out of 10. And, and, like, I thought I would like this, but I didn't think I would love it that much but i i love this a lot so yeah well there you guys have it that is our double feature tom and bc bringing the heat we got some weird ones for you i hope we were informative motherfuckers until the next time tune in to neon track